it's crazy finding a house a rental place here it's not at all easy it was very difficult for me to find this apartment where i'm living right now Many in Bridgewater have trouble paying their rent, and on top of that, they experience energy poverty. In fact, 40% of Bridgewater's residents live in energy poverty. Energy poverty is not being able to afford your energy bill, living in a cold and drafty home that makes you feel uncomfortable, experiencing power disruptions and having your power cut off. Wherever I have lived before, it was always included and my rent was always like maybe 400. To understand energy poverty and the way it manifests in the lives of Bridgewater residents, we need to ask the following questions. Who is most likely to experience energy poverty? Why are those individuals more likely to experience energy poverty? And what does that experience feel like? Have you experienced any racial discrimination? For sure. Like, you know, almost like weekly, I've been followed around stores here. It's never really something that happened to me in the city as much. And then also I've been called really intense racial slurs like the N-word. I actually went here for school for a year um, back in 2016. And um, there, was a, there was a lot of slurs used. Bridgewater has partnered with the Town of Bridgewater's Anti-Racism Task Force to try to understand the relationship between energy poverty and racism through the stories of those with lived experiences. Francis is heartened by Bridgewater's interest in energy poverty and racism and sees a connection between those two issues. Now we might think Energize Bridgewater isn't an anti-racist project or program, but in many ways, some of the things that are being addressed by this uh, project will go a long way in addressing the iniquities that we see. Sometimes I just feel like people here are not really accepting mm -hmm. well, the new people here, right? Even if, uh, like, if someone is moving up here and they have to find a place, and especially if they are a uh, person of color, so they might have problem finding a mm -hmm. housing because people like to like, prefer their own race, I guess. I experienced racism in Syria. Thank God, I've not experienced it here. We would all wish for a situation whereby that personalized racism, whereby people are overt with their racism and, and how they express. Uh, their thoughts about other people uh, comes to an end. But for me, what, what's more crucial is systemic racism, whereby uh, there are so many instances and, and just things that I see in my day-to-day -day experience where you can s see clearly that systems put in place are not, uh, are not equal for everyone. Systemic racism is policies and practices that are hidden in an organization or society often unintentionally, but the result in and support a continued unfair advantage for some people and unfair or harmful disadvantage for others based on race. So we have the framework, but that's like the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if that's the tip of the iceberg, we have to look at, you know, three quarters of what's going on underneath and how do we bring that up so that everybody's in alignment instead of you know, feeling left out. Yeah. Conversations with Bridgewater residents reveal how energy poverty, race, income, and family situations intersect to create a struggle to meet basic needs. Seniors are also a demographic at high risk for energy poverty. five employees that work for in the store with mm -hmm. us we don't make enough money that we can we can you know we, we don't pay anybody minimum wage we pay more than that but still it's not enough to to you know afford everything for I would them to say. be able to yeah. sustain themselves yeah. right mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. discrimination 
and access barriers play a large role in one's ability to find quality housing that is affordable to eat. I work at Source in the mall and I work at um, Ultramar gas station. So since after doing two jobs, I just feel like they're still not the worth. I'm just working to pay my bills and expenses only. So basically there are no savings, so there's nothing. It's just paying the expenses. Energy poverty is making trade-offs between basic needs such as groceries and medication in order to keep up with energy bills. Definitely put strain on my parents' relationship and our relationship as a family. Not that there weren't good times, but I think because of the stress from living in energy poverty, there were also a lot of bad times that we didn't need to have. Some of those most impacted include African Nova Scotians, single mothers, and those who are known to be associated with local support services. Like, I can't imagine if I was just on a basic paying minimum wage job, right? It'll be like really hard for someone who is just like working basic minimum wage job, which is most people here. Yeah. I feel privileged. We're privileged and blessed that uh, my wife and I are very well paying jobs. So if, if, if I look at it from, from, from a, a perspective of income versus what you're paying, you're not paying too high. But I also know, having been, been around here, that that's not the case for many people. Working paycheck to paycheck and then with rent and, and the, like the energy bill on top of that, it was, yeah, things were very stretched. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, there were weeks when like food was scarce. Rusty, uh... Energy bills are high, actually, especially for those with limited income. It's just everything keeps adding up and then it just, there is nothing left in the end. And if you do find housing, Transportation becomes a real issue. Like, transportation definitely can be improved. I'm also limited to the town of Bridgewater only. I could go to the mall, like, to the extent of McDonald's, that's it. Definitely, if you live in this area, you, you can't survive without having a car. We can work together to address these inequities by understanding the stories of individuals and their personal experiences. But I feel like a community maybe should be feel more accessible or feel more like open. Maybe like stop judging people from who they are for already what mindsets we have. Right, right. Like get to know them more first before trying to make judgments. I'm really inspired by the Bridgewater Town Council's prioritizing of energy poverty in this project to say we're going to do this. We always come with a very paternalistic approach to, 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 to helping out. And so if there's one thing that I would hope that uh, uh, the town of Bridgewater takes is that the people who are ac actually living the experiences that we want to address should be involved at all levels of, 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 of development. And to, from my perspective, they should be empowered to be the ones making the decisions. Because otherwise it would be a group of uh, middle class or, or upper class individuals trying to create solutions for people uh, who are impacted by energy poverty. We're going to get down to the nit what I call the nitty gritty. You're the one that's experiencing it and the bottom line is we need to hear your story. Our community is built on understanding the perspectives of others and weaving these narratives into a complex fabric that gives us a clear idea of how we can make changes to ensure that we live in an inclusive community.